The UN's refugee agency, the UNHCR, is warning of mass, mass deaths from starvation across the Horn of Africa, Nigeria and Yemen. Now, it's raising the alarm because of a severe funding shortfall that they say could lead to an unavoidable humanitarian crisis. It says this could possibly be worse than starvation levels seen five years ago when tens of thousands of people died from hunger. Well, famine's already been declared in South Sudan, where conflict and drought have led to mass hunger. But the UN says people in Nigeria, Somalia and Yemen are also starving to death. In all, around 20 million people are at risk of dying in the coming six months. Last month, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, said more than $4 billion was needed by the end of March to respond to this emergency. Well, Adrian Edwards is a spokesman for UNHCR. He joins us now live from Geneva. Um, the areas that you've outlined in this uh, very alarming warning that you've issued are, are areas that are plagued not just by, uh, uh, by uh, conflict, but they've also experienced a lot of drought as well. So that combined with reduced funding is leading to this, this terrible dilemma. That's absolutely right. It is now an extremely alarming situation, uh, a situation that we and others have warned about uh, over many months now is, in fact, fast becoming a reality today. We're seeing that evidence in a number of ways. One is that displacement levels have been rising very significantly. In Sudan, in Uganda, for example, we're now having to increase our planning estimates for displacement in 2017 very considerably. Uh, we're seeing children drop, dropping out of school in places. Um, in other places, we're seeing newly arriving refugee children uh, with uh, acute malnutrition rates running at up to 80 percent or so. Now, if you don't treat malnutrition when it's serious, uh, people die. Uh, it's that serious. This is no longer a situation of the future. It's a situation that is now unfolding. And presumably the prospects look particularly bleak, given that uh, uh, President Trump has already uh, put into effect, hasn't he, his, his doctrine of putting America first and has announced that he's prepared to reduce uh, funding to the UN. And, of course, the UN relies to the tune of, what, 22%? Uh, of its budget every two years on the United States. It is extremely worrying that internationally uh, we have a level of funding for these situations across a wide swathe of sub-Saharan Africa and into Yemen um, that are now catastrophically uh, poorly funded. In few of these situations are we seeing funding levels at above uh, 10, 11 percent. And what that means in practice is real hardships for people. Uh, food rations are being cut. There's simply no uh, money in many of these places to uh, pay for food for people. So that has an effect. In the middle of a situation already of drought, of conflict in several of these places, um, and of famine, uh, to cut food rations further means we have additional problems. In addition to all of that, you have a situation where more refugee arrivals in the region is putting pressure on resources too. So you cannot simply put refugees into situations where they can fend for themselves. They do need help. They're almost entirely dependent on aid in this kind of emergency situation. So are you getting, and, a, are you getting a sense... Um, as a consequence, they desperately need funding to address this. So are you getting a sense that it's not just the United States, but it's the other big powers as well that are moving much more towards a, a, an isolationist position and moving away from multilateralism? The international community has for years funded humanitarian situations. I think what has happened over recent months has been internationally there has been a huge focus on the situations in Syria on the one hand, in Iraq um, in the other. And in sub-Saharan Africa, we've seen a repeat of a problem that we've seen year in, year out, which is that many of these situations get ignored until it's far too late. In 2011, in the Horn of Africa situation, you had 260,000 lives were lost in the um, a drought and displacement situation we saw then. It's desperately important now that we don't return to a repeat of that situation or worse. And that's why we have issued this warning today 
and this appeal to the whole international community to come forward uh, with the funding needed. But the problem is in, in so many of the uh, Western countries in particular there is, I know it's, a, it's an often used phrase, uh, but donor fatigue. Uh, there are many who are questioning uh, the effectiveness actually of their donations to overseas efforts and, and, and some people are, are asking for more focus to be put on conflict resolution, end the conflicts and then there wouldn't be so much humanitarian need. Well, the absolute reality here is that lives will be lost if help doesn't uh, arrive. I think this brings this argument very much into sharp focus here. There needs to be um, a proper level of international aid and funding for these kind of situations or we head towards catastrophe. And right now, um, in this region, we're in grave danger of going from a very, very dramatically serious situation already um, to one of catastrophic proportions in just a few months. And at this stage, uh, very briefly, Adrian Edwards, if you wouldn't mind, how, how, how much of a crisis is your particular agency in, in terms of reduced funding, UNHCR? Well, I think we share the same issues that all um, uh, UN agencies and humanitarian agencies uh, face at the moment. We are in a global envir environment, uh, a real concern about the funding levels for humanitarian operations. And frankly, in a situation where you have heightened uh, conflict in many parts of the world, heightened conflict uh, predictions going ahead, uh, it is absolutely crucial too that we have some means of dealing with people fleeing war, uh, fleeing famine, uh, fleeing uh, persecution and all these other problems. Um, that is a problem uh, of our times. Uh, we hope that people will wake up with situations like this to just how desperate the need really is. Adrian Edwards of UNHCR, the UN's uh, refugee agency, thank you very much indeed.